Glory to God. In Psalm chapter 16, verse 11, uh, David was saying that, uh, um, he said, thou will show me the path of life, the paths of life. And then he said, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And then he said, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now, what David was talking about, different realms and dimensions, where the Lord is satisfying you and taking care of you and showing you his goodness, his provision, his supply. And he's allowing you to taste and see that he's good, like in Psalm 34 says. So um, this is a harvest glory of God a harvest glory of God. Because he said, in your presence is fullness of joy. Now, if you remember, King Jesus had asked the disciples, ask what you will, that your joy may be full. So you notice how King Jesus acquainted joy, that it was a supply system. You ask what you want, and then your joy going to be full. Now watch this. So let's hop back over to what David said. He said, in your presence is fullness of joy. So what you got to catch is that when your life is truly in the presence of God, now the, the, now the supply plan of God could start working. Now his wish to supply you and distribute to you can start working. Because remember, King Jesus said, ask what you will, that your joy may be full. Well, he was saying the Father going to give you stuff. And then David said, in your presence is fullness of joy. So I, I want to say something to you. A lot of times, people suffer all throughout their life because they never got into God's presence. They got around his presence. David said, in your presence. Being around God's presence and in God's presence is two different things. Soda. When you're in his presence, that means that now you're engaged in the kingdom system. When you're around his presence, you're a spectator. You remember the words say that there was disciples that followed Jesus and then as soon as he said, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, they no longer follow him. They was around his presence. The people that stayed was in his presence. See, in his presence, there is an internal transformation. When you're in his presence internally, your heart is knitted with God. That's why 1 John 3, 9 said that you're born of God, you cannot sin for his seed remaineth in you. See, that's being in his presence. When God has you in his presence, it's impossible for you not to become rich or wealthy or healthy. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. So when you're in his presence, the supplies that you want start moving towards you. This is the harvest plan of God. You're going to have to learn how to honor God and how to pray to God. The most effective prayer is tongues and thanksgiving. Honoring God, praying and sowing are two weapons that's going to protect you in this very evil world. Even when God make you wealthy, how you going to be protected from people robbing you? You're going to have to be praying and sowing. You're going to have to become more of a spirit being. When you're not sowing, you should be praying. Praying and sowing has to be a part of of your armor, your weapon, your options. You're going to have to pray and sow all the time. 
If you're not sowing money, sow yourself. You have to be a spirit person. Sometimes I'm driving or I might be on a passenger seat being chauffeured around. I'm in my I'm in my phone looking at scriptures, meditating word, meditating the Bible. I do that for me, not for you, because I must I'm anointed myself. You got to be a spirit person. The Lord will make a spirit rich, not flesh. The Lord will make spirit wealthy, not flesh. The Lord will make spirit whole, not flesh. God is promoting spirit, not flesh. So if John 6, 63 revealed that the word is spirit, how could you stay in the spirit if you're not in the word? It's impossible. You're fooling yourself. You're not truly in the presence of God completely until you're excited about his word. Because the presence of God, one of the attributes of his presence is excitement for the word. God, his biggest distribution to you is word. Inside of his word is money cometh. Inside of his word is supernatural increase. You notice that the word money cometh is, is words. See, God get money cometh to you by word. God get the sowing anointing to you by word. God get the praying anointing to you by word. You can't be a virtuous woman without word. You can't be no kingly man without word. And you can't keep yourself in God's will without the word. The word is an empowerment. And when you have the word, it bring you into tongues. It bring you into sowing. It bring you into servanthood. Today, it was a big old traffic jam while I was driving and I was praying in tongues while I was driving and I skipped about 20 minutes worth of, 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 of traffic jam because I simply followed the Holy Ghost. Everybody was stuck in one lane and I found the other lane. It's not like the other lane wasn't there, but people are, are they're, they're disconnected from godly communication. But see, because I'm praying in tongues, as soon as I went that way, everybody started following me. Pass them up because I'm following the GPS of the Holy Ghost. When you pray in tongues, you have the advantage in everything you do. And see, oftentimes when you have assignments that you need to complete, Satan gets your brain in overload so you could get stressed out and then you can have anxiety and then you never get it done because you're stressed out. You're overthinking. That's demonic. That's the demon of anxiety. When you pray in tongues, you receive rest, calmness. If you don't walk in rest, you're not walking with God. When you walk with God, you become restful. Rest is divine evidence that the Lord has taken you over. Rest. You can't have no rest if you ain't got no money. So that's why the Holy Spirit teach you how to profit. Many believers be trying to have rest with no money. That's an oxymoron type of equation because God supply money a part of the rest. God will put pressure on our life until we start making money. <laughs> I felt it when I was 17. That's why I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't be no sissy. I can't be sitting on me, no mama talking about mama, 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 mama. No, no I, can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. God put pressure on you until you start making money, especially when you're well able. He don't let you sit down and just say, God, go make a way for me. I am God in the flesh, and God is flowing through my flesh to make the way that he wants to make. 
You notice Jesus multiplied five loaves and two fish. He didn't give the multitude fish. You're going to have to catch that later. So Jesus was in reaction mode. See, oftentimes we got Jesus in give me mode. But you got to understand Jesus is a responder. He reacts. He multiplied five loaves and two fish. He didn't give the multitude fish and loaves. He multiplied what was given to him. So if you never have anything to give to God, I mean, like you go months and months and months. Just think about it. You're not in his presence. You're in the presence of the devil. You're in the presence of the thief. That's why the thief got you of being a thief. <laughs> what you think you're a thief for? Because you, 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 you hanging around what you, you, you doing what you hang around. When you get around God's presence, you get around sowing. Look at everybody in the church in the book of Acts. Wasn't all of them sowing? Ananias was around classified sowers. People were sowing their house and taking all the money and sowing it right in their face. Everybody was a classified sower. Why? Because they was in God's presence. Saints, it's not that you don't have opportunities to sow, is that you don't recognize the opportunities to sow. Do you know how many times in my life that God have told me to give somebody something just so that they could sow and they took it? Many a times, because sometimes people talk, 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 and God would say, pick, 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 pick this right here. And then, then they just take it. And God be like, see, son? A person be telling them, if I just had it, I'll sow it. And then as soon as they get it, they don't even sow it. And, and see, it's a mindset. We've been taught to look and convince ourselves that we're not a sower because we ain't got a lot. When really we're not a sower because we don't believe in Jesus. We not his cheerleader. We don't trust him. We trust this natural world. We trust the Babylonian system. We trust in our own understanding. Saints, God made me rich because I trust him. And that's why I don't, I, I ain't got no guilt in my mind. I don't worry about people that's not as rich as me because they ain't got the same sensitivity to God as me. They don't obey God like me. So I don't be feeling bad for people. Because when they be stressed out over stuff, I don't walk the same path that they walk and I wasn't stressed out. I dominated the path. And I was against all odds, just like everybody else. You can't say, oh, well, prophet, you knew this person, I knew this person. No, every preacher that I knew, God had me change my phone number, disconnect from all preaching engagements, no longer was in no limelight. I sat myself down and sought the Lord, became quiet, became an alien to everybody that knew me and started from the bottom. You think about it. The Holy Ghost connected me to the chief apostle. <laughs> and see, I've been drunk ever since. Harvests is the wine of God that come to intoxicate you so that you can experience the fullness of joy. Harvests is the wine of God. And I speak harvests over your life as you're watching me. I decree over you that you will live in harvests and I saturate you with the harvest power of God. Harvest angels, as I stand in the presence of God, go forth and minister to my people. In Jesus' name, it's already done.